I have a confession to make. I've told you a lie. I told you that all your widgets are here in this UI builder, but there are actually other ones that you've already been using, but they're hidden. For instance, these properties right here, like padding, expansion, and alignment, these actually aren't properties on this container. They're actually widgets. So let me show you here. If I just add some padding right here and come into the code view and select the container, you can see here's our container and that's wrapped in a padding widget. This is just how Flutter does it. And similarly, if we come in here and add some alignment, you can see that once again, we have an align widget that wraps our padding, that wraps our container. So in this video, we're gonna talk about two things. Why Flutterflow hides some widgets and why it matters. Like, why are we making a video about this? So first, why do we hide them? Now, I'm being a little bit cheeky because it's not so much that we hide them, but that we expose them as properties. So nothing is lost. It's just how you access them. Okay, but why do we do it this way? Well, think about a scenario like this. And let me make this bigger here. And on this page, you can see we've got tons of widgets already. Now, you can imagine, for instance, with this text widget right here, we've got some padding on the top. And if you go to this one, we've got some padding there and we've got some padding here as well. And if all of these were not just text widgets, but padding and then text widgets, let alone if you had anything else like expansion or alignment, your widget tree would be huge and it would become hard to find things and change them. And think about when you're dragging and reordering widgets, it would just be a mess. So by exposing these as properties on widgets, it cleans up the widget tree and helps you to work faster. There's also some logic to it because especially if you're coming from a web design background, you normally think of something like padding as a property on something here, a text widget. That is, we think about this as not primarily another thing, but a feature of this text widget. So there is a logic that makes sense to a lot of designers and developers. So that's why Flutterflow hides them, to help you work faster and more efficiently. Okay, but why do we need to know about this? Well, let me give you an example right here. So here we've got a container and a column. And if we look at the structure of it, we can see that the main axis alignment is to the top and the cross axis is at the start. So it should be over here. And if you remember our rule from our previous layout video, the parent sets the position. So why isn't this container over here? If we click on it, we can see that we've got an alignment set to center. Okay, but still, I thought the parent sets the position. Now, here's an example of where understanding that this alignment is another widget that wraps this widget is going to be helpful. Because in reality, the align widget that's wrapping our container, and we can just take a quick look at it right here, our align wraps our container, our align widget is taking up the full width of this column. And so when the column is positioning the children, it's not positioning a child that's 100 by 100 pixels the way it looks here, but it's actually positioning a child that's the full width like this. And so we can visualize this by having this full width and we come up to our column and we see that this is aligned to the left or the start. That's actually what it's doing because it's the full width. And of course, these won't make any difference because it's the full width. Okay, but how did I know that that align widget did that? Well, I just went into the Flutter documentation here. And in this line right here, it says, this widget will be as big as possible if the dimensions are constrained. Well, in a column, the width is constrained by the screen, but the height is unconstrained. So it tries to be as big as possible for the width. And once you understand that, then this layout makes sense. But without knowing that there was this widget in between the container and the column, this type of situation could be confusing. So if you're seeing a layout that's confusing and you've worked through those three principles we looked at in the previous video, then you can always check in the code to see if there are any other widgets that are being added. And that's the one tiny lie I've been telling you.